Yes, very good morning. Shall we begin the session? Today's topic is the chapter number four, intermediate SQL. That is a new, yeah, this is a new topic and full fledged the concept is totally different from the um, basic SQL because this is the advanced SQL that is the intermediate, not the advanced, that is the intermediate SQL. No, in this chapter we mainly focus on the view definitions, transactions, integrity constraints in more detail regarding the SQL data definition authorizations. All right, so wait for five minutes. So let's begin with the first part that is the join expression. So in this we introduce the natural join operation and this SQL also provides the other form of join operation that includes the ability to specify an explicit join predicates and the ability to include in the result tuple that are excluded by the natural join. So whatever the tuple that is excluded by the natural join that is expressed in the join expression. So we shall discuss these forms of join in this section. So the example in this section involves two relation. One is a student, one is a takes. And observe that the attribute grade, a grade has a value null for the student with ID 98988 for the course bio 301 section 1 taken in the summer 2010. In the same way the null value also indicates that the grade has not been awarded yet. That means the grade has not been awarded yet to the candidate. So it is also pending work. That, that's why it is showing as a then the join operation. So the join condition. There are two conditions we are using with the join condition. That is a form of the natural join that requires values to match on a specified attributes. The SQL also supports another form of join in which an arbitrary join condition can be specified that allows a general predicate over the relation that are being joined. This predicate is written like a where clause. What is a where clause that is written a predicate except for the use of the keyword on rather than the where. So we are using the on keyword rather than the where keyword. In the same way, like using the using condition, the on condition will be used at the end of the join expression. So we are using the on condition, we are using the using condition we are using the join expression so consider the following query which has a join expression containing the on condition this is select a string from student join takes on student dot id equals to takes dot id so this is select a string a string means select each and everything from the student that is joined with the takes so it is joined with the takes on which field uh, on which item that is available on the student dot id equals to takes dot id and this on condition also above specifies that a tuple from a student also joined or also matches a tuple from a takes value if their IDs are the same. So if their IDs are equal, then only it is joined. Otherwise, it is not joined. So in this join operation or expression in this case is almost the same as a join expression student natural join takes. But in this, we are considering on the focus or we are focusing on the uh, two expressions. We are considering on the two fields. And this tuple uh, have a specific relation that is from the student that matches a tuple from takes if their ID values are equal. And this join expression in this case is almost the same as a join expression student natural join takes. Since the natural join operation also requires that for a student tuple and the takes tuples to match. One difference is that the result has an ID attribute listed twice and in the joint result once for the student and once for the takes even though their ID value may be same. So because it is uh, using the join operation, so it is taking out the IDs from both the tables that is from the student that is from the takes. In fact, the above query is equivalent to the following query. Select a strict from student takes where student ID is the take ID. And as we have already seen earlier that the relation name is used to disambiguate the attribute name ID and therefore the two occurrences can be referred to as a student.id and the takes.id respectively. And the version of this query that displays the ID value only once is as follows. This is select student.id as ID, name, department name, total credit, course ID, section ID, semester, year, grade, from student join takes. So it is student is joined with the takes on, on which field that is student.id equals to takes.id. And the on condition can express any SQL predicate and therefore uh, it is used a join expression using the on condition and can express the richest class of join operations, join condition. Then the natural join. 
However, when it is illustrated by the example, a query using a join expression with an own condition that can be replaced by an equivalent expression without the own condition. That is used with a predicate in the on clause that is moved to the where part or the where clause. Therefore, it may appear that the on condition is a redundant feature of SQL. That means it is repeated out, repeated out each and every field, each and every tuple. However, there are two good reasons for including the on condition. The first one is that we are using uh, or we are uh, dealing out this as the outer join. And the on conditions do also behave in a manner different from the where condition. Second, an SQL query is also often more readable by the humans if the join condition is also specified in the on clause and the rest of the conditions appears in the where clause. The next is outer join. So suppose you wish to display a list of all the students displaying their ID, displaying their name, department name, total credit, along with the courses that they have taken. So the following query will appear to retrieve the following details. One is select a strip from student natural join text. So the student is uh, taken out or student is joined with the or natural joins with the text. And unfortunately the above query does not work quite as intended. Suppose that if there is a student, some student who takes no courses, then the tuple in the student relation for that particular student will not satisfy the condition of a natural join with any tuple in the takes relation. That student transfer or student data will not appear in the result. So we would thus not see any, any information about the student who have not taken out any, any details, any joins, any courses. For example, in the student in the takes relation, now the student or note that the students know with ID 70557 has not taken any courses. In the same way snow also appears in the student but the snow's ID number does not appear in the ID number of the takes. Therefore when we talk about the snow that does not appear in the result of the natural choice. And more generally more the tuples or sorry some tuples in either or both the relation being joined may be lost in, in this way. This outer join operation works in a manner similar to the join operation that we already studied. But without the tuple that would be lost in a join by creating the tuples in the result containing null values. Now for example, uh, listen to this example carefully. For example, to ensure that the student names know from our earlier example appears in the result. Then a tuple could be added to the join result with all the attributes from a student relation set to the corresponding values for the students know. And the remaining attributes which come from the takes relation, namely course ID, section ID, semester, year, that sets to the null values. Therefore, the tuple for the students know is also preserved in the result of the outer join. So whenever it is taken out, the, uh, this null value that is taken out as an outer join. So this is also privilege for the outer join to take each and every value for the data. And there are in fact three forms of the outer join. One is a left outer join that preserves the tuples only in the relation named before or, or uh, before the left outer join operation. Then the right outer join that preserves the tuples only in the relation named after the right outer join operation. Then the full outer join that preserves the tuples in both the relation. And in contrast, the join operation we studied earlier that do not preserve non match tuple that are also known as the inner join operations to differentiate, to distinguish them from the outer join operations. Now we now explain uh, exactly how, how each form of the outer join operates. So we can communicate or we can compute the left outer join operation that is as follows. So first compute the result of the inner join as before. Then for every tuple T in the left hand side relation that does not match any tuple in the right hand side relation. So this acts a tuple R to the specified field to the join constructed with as follow. So first of all the attributes of tuple R that are derived from the left hand side relation are filled in with the values from the tuple T. And the remaining attributes of the R are filled with the null values. In the same way when I want to take the tuples of the uh, when I want to take the attributes of the tuple R that are derived that are filled in with the values that is specified with the values tuple T and the remaining attributes of R are also filled with the null values and this figure shows the result of the select asterisk from student 
that is a natural left outer joint take. So the, the, this results include students know that is ID 70557 unlike the result of an inner joint but the tuple for that snow includes null for the attribute that appear only in the schemas of the takes relation. So this is taken out with the takes relation, this is taken out with the takes table. So as an another example of the use of the outer join operation, we can write the query, find all the students who have not taken any course. So select ID from student, natural, jo uh, natural left outer joint takes, where course ID is null. So what is the condition? It is finding out the, those details, those, uh, it, it is combining out those ID or it is displaying the ID field in which the course ID is a null and it is joined with the student in the take. And the right outer join is also symmetric to the left outer join. Tuples from the right hand side relation that does not match any tuple in the left hand side relation are padded up with the nulls. It is coming up with the nulls, it is coming up with a zero. <coughs> and are added to the result of the right outer join. Therefore, if we rewrite the above query using a right outer join <coughs> and swapping the order in which we list the relation, that is select a trick from takes natural right outer join student. So we get the same result except for the order in which the attributes appear in the result. And when we talk about the full outer join, that is also a combination of the left and the right outer join types. And after the operation computes the result of the inner join, it exchanges with the null tuples from the left and right that does not match with the um, detail, that does not match with the higher details. Then this is the ID, name, department name, total credit, course ID, section ID, semester, year and the grade. This is ID, this is the name, this is the department name, total credit, course ID, semester, year and the grade. So this is using up with a full outer join. This is considering the following query that is displayed with the list of the queries of the students in the computer science department along with the course section, if any, that is taken up in the spring 2009. Now. This is the next example. Display a list of all the students in the computer science department. So it is taken out the condition that the department name is a computer science. Along with the core sections, if any, that they have taken in the spring 2009, all the core sections from the spring must be displayed even if number student, or sorry, if even if the no students from the computer science department has taken the same course. That means it displayed each and every student that has taken out this course for the left outer join. Okay. So when we talk about this query, this query is written out within the nested query. So this is select a strict from, again there is a query that is written out as a nested query. So we let's select a strict from, select a strict that is select all from student where department name equals to computer size. It is taken out with each and every field from the student where the department name is computer science that is natural full outer join. So it is a full outer join. It is taken out with the natural join as well as the full outer join with the takes relation from takes where semester equals to spring and year equal to 2009. So this is the output. It is ID is generated out, course ID is also available, section ID is also available, then semester year. These are the and grade. These are the from student relation and the name, department name, total grade are from the semester department semester table so we can yes we can also use the own clause that can be used with the outer join and this is identical to the first query that we use or that we saw using the student natural left join or takes except the attribute id that appears twice in the result so this is select a strict from student left outer join takes on student dot id and takes dot id and on and where behave differently for the outer join the reason for this is the outer join adds Null padded tuples only for those tuples that do not contribute to the result of the corresponding inner join. And this is a part of the outer join specification. But when we say about the where clause, that is not a specification of the outer join or the own condition. So in our example, the case of the student tuple for the students know with ID 70557 that is illustrate, we can modify the preceding query by moving the own clause predicate to the where clause and the instead using an own condition of the true. So this is select a strict from student left after join takes on true where student dot id equals to takes dot id. Then these are the join types, join conditions, inner join, 
left outer join, right outer join, and the full outer join. This is natural on predicate using. So there are the multiple join types and the condition that is also used so to differentiate the normal joins from the outer join. Normal joins are also known as the inner joins in the SQL and this join can uh, this specify the inner join that is instead of the outer join to specify that a normal join is to be used. And the keyword inner is however optional and the default join type when the join clause is used without the outer prefix that is the inner join. The, this is select a strict from student that is joined with the takes using the ID. That is equivalent to select a strict from student. This is inner join the takes using the this one. Because if I'm talking about the inner join, if I'm talking about the natural join, if I'm talking about the join, these are the same things. And this, this figure shows various types of joins. Now next is the views that is the logical model of the content, logical model of the view definition. So what is the view that is specified or that is uh, used to collect the relations so that the relations in the collection we are giving to the actual relations stored in the database. It is not desirable for all the users to see the entire logical model. And the security consideration also requires that certain data is hidden from the users and consider the clerk who needs to know the inspector's ID name, department name but does not have authorizations to see the inspector salary amount. So this person could would see a relation that is described in the SQL. So this is select ID name, department name from inspector. And aside from the security constraints, security concern, we may wish to create a personalized collection of the relations that is better matched to the certain user intuition that than the logical models. This is the next example. Suppose we want to take the course section that is offered by the physics department in the fall 2009 semester with the building and the room number of each section. So the relation that we could create for obtaining such list is select course dot course ID, section ID, building, room number from course and the section. There's no and I'm talking about that from course comma section where course dot course ID is equals to section dot course ID. And course dot department name as physics, section dot semester is for section dot year is 2009. And it, it also possible to compute and store the result of the above queries, then make the stored relation available to the users. <coughs> However, if we did so, and the underlying data in the relations instructor course section changes, so the stored query results will then no longer match the result of the re-executing the query on the relations. And in general, it is a bad idea to compute and store the query results such as those in the above examples. So instead, SQL also allows a virtual relation to be defined by a query and the relation conceptually contains the result of the query. And the virtual relation is not pre-computed and stored, but instead it is computed by executing the query whenever the virtual relation takes place, whenever the virtual relation is used. Any such relation is that is not a part of the logical model it is made visible to a user as a virtual relation that is known as a view. It is also possible to support a large number of the views to uh, on the top of any given set of actual relations. Next is a view definition. So this can be, or we can define a view in the SQL by using the create view command. And to define a view, we must give the view a name and must state the query that computes the view. So the general form or the syntax for the create view command is create view v. This name of the view is v as query expression. A query expression is any legal query expression and the view name is represented by the v. Now consider again the clerk who needs to access all the data in the instructor relation 
accept the salary. So the clerk should not be authorized to access the instructor relation. Instead, a view relation faculty can be made available to the clerk by the view defined as follows. This is create view faculty as select ID, name, department name from the instructors. And as explained earlier, the view relation conceptually contains the tuples in the query result, but that is not pre-computed and the stored. Instead, the database system stores the query expression that is associated with the view relation. So to create a view that lists all the course section offered by the physics department in the fall 2009 with the building room number of each and every section. So this is create view physics fall 2009 as select course course ID section ID building room number from course section where course dot course ID is section dot course ID and course dot department name physics and section dot semester is fall and section dot year is 2009. So till now any doubts anyone? Yeah, these are the views that is also used in the SQL query. These are the views that is also used with the building and the room number of each and every query. So this is taken out with the view physics fall 2009, course ID, section ID, building room number, course relation, section ID, that is a department view, 